Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial I'll be talking about calibrating your reference monitor for DaVinci Resolve using DisplayCal. Now this process can seem a little daunting at first because you have to do some weird stuff, but after you do it one time, it'll be pretty easy. So without further ado, we'll hop over into the computer and we'll get things started. So we've got just a random project inside Resolve and the first thing we'll do is go up to Workspace, Monitor Calibration, and we're going to do the SpectraCal Calman. And now you see we get this crazy pop-up that came up that doesn't really mean anything yet. So we'll just leave this up and then we'll go and open up Display Cal. This is a free app that you can download and you can calibrate your main computer monitors with it also. It works really well. It's a little bit goofy, but you know, just Google the definitions of things and you'll be pretty fine. And here, the things we're gonna want to check is under Display, we're gonna choose Resolve down at the bottom. So you see we've got all the other monitors here and then Resolve. Then the instrument, I'm using an i1 Display Pro. So that's the only thing selected there. Mode, we'll keep it LCD. And since I'm using an OLED monitor, we have to click this white level drift compensation just because of the way that the um, production circuits work in there. This will help us get a more accurate calibration. And for those of you wondering, it is an LG C8. It's a lot of people use, it works well, would recommend. It's got a lot of great stuff. Really, if you have an LG C8, you don't need to do resolve calibration this way because it actually can take 33.3D LUTs in there but you have to use some more expensive software and probes and stuff. So for most people, this will be a good option. Though I'd recommend getting an actual calibration. It's only like 300 bucks. And you know, what's that confidence worth for you? So we've got all of this done. We don't need to do anything else. So leaving everything else as default. If you want to play around with that more, you can. But for this, we just can leave it like this. We'll go calibrate and profile. Now you're seeing waiting for connection at 10.59.13.6, port 20,002. This may be different for yours, but we can just type these numbers in. So I'm going to put this over on the side and type in 10.59.13.6, connect. It says connected. And now if we tab back over to display cal, we get this, which we don't need to worry about. Just hit start measurement. And now you can see we get this crazy screen on our screen. So make sure that you have your reference monitor hooked up to a deck link or whatever else you can output from Resolve with. And then you'll get this nice little box up there. Now once that's up there, we'll go ahead and place our calibration device right up there. You see I put mine off to the side a little bit and you'll see why that is in just a second. And I'm going to get very dark for a second. So exit, turn off zone one lights. You should be doing your calibration in the environment that you're going to be grading in. So here we go. I'm just a nice little silhouette here. And now we'll hop back over to the computer. All right. So now it tells us to put our instrument on the window. So we've done that. Hit OK. And now it will run through a couple patterns for us. So now that it's run through that little test, we're going to hit Start Measurement. And we'll run through a couple more. And now this is the most difficult part of the process. So you see, I put my little thing to the side here because this is whenever we're going to manually adjust our picture settings to get them as close as we can. So this is if you don't have a 3D LUT support for your display. This is like making your own, basically, just like a really coarse one. So I'm going to go to settings, all settings, go to our picture mode, select our picture mode. Now I'll go down to expert controls because we're all experts here. And now we've got our white balance controls. So we've got red, green, and blue down here. Now, if we look at our display cal thing, it shows us we've got too much green in here. So we'll go select green and we'll just start minusing that. And you can see our little graph here is updating. Let's keep going until everything is nice and even. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go back. And now we've got our first thing. And now we can also adjust our luminance down here. Let's bring this down until it's about in spec. So we're shooting for 260 CD per meter square. And now we're about there. So now we've got that. And now that is all of the manual calibration that you have to do. So we can hit stop measurement and continue on to calibration. And now this will take a long time. So I'll go ahead and make a time lapse of this. 
and then we'll be good to go. All right. So roughly one episode of MASH later, we are all measured up. So now we can do something like show profile information. Oh, look at all these cool things that we're not going to talk about. Yeah, look at all these numbers. Check this out. Print this off. Put this on your fridge. Really impress people. All right, so we've got good stuff. Looks like we have an OK monitor on our hands. And now we'll hit Create 3D LUT. And now this will take another minute or two. We'll just fast forward through this. All right, now the LUT is generated, so we'll hit Save 3D LUT As, and we'll select our location. So here I've created a Calibration LUT folder inside my LUTs folder, so Calibration LUTs. If you don't know where your LUTs folder is in DaVinci Resolve, you can go to Shift-9, or you can click on the little gear icon if you have that enabled, but who has that enabled, right? And then you go down to Color Management, and then Open LUT Folder, and that'll take you to where your LUTs are saved at. So now we'll save this in here. You can name this whatever you want, or just leave it as this cool, big, long name to really impress people. Hit Save, and now that's in there. So you're done with Display Cal. You can just turn this off, and now just hit Update Lists. And now if we go and check over in our 3D video monitor lookup table. If you try to scroll through, this is really annoying. We can go to this little menu over here and I can see calibration LUTs. We've got this guy. Excellent. Looks great. And hit save. You probably can't tell this on the video, but now it matches a little bit better, which is pretty nice. So all of that. Now we've got a nice calibrated monitor, which everyone likes. It matches our GUI monitor pretty well. I have my lights on in my office, so obviously I can't tell super great but i mean they look you know on enough to me the oled's got more contrast of course but you know i think we're, we've got something good here so that is a nice quick and easy way i guess i should say that's a nice way that's not a lot of work to to calibrate your reference monitor so i guess we'll sign out there then if you like this video be sure to give it a like if you didn't give it a dislike no matter what leave your feelings in the comments below if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe to me's media youtube channel if you want even more goodness check out media.com slash products where we've got all sorts of LUTs and stock footage and other stuff to check out and even if you don't want that and you like the tutorials that's a good way to let me know like hey make more tutorials paying money is good i like getting money what can i say also be sure to leave suggestions for other tutorials down in the comments i always appreciate those because the hardest part of making tutorials is coming up with good tutorial ideas so let me know what your thoughts are. I probably won't make them, but leave, me, but leave the thoughts anyway. What can I say? Eventually they might get made. This tutorial has been on the list for a long time. So anyway, once again, I'm with you with Mr. Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.